Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation I'm very excited to have with me, Jerry Foster, who's the Chief Technology Officer at Plex Systems. So welcome, Jerry. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here, sir. I, I'm, a, I'm really looking forward to just hearing your story. We always start these heroes conversations with just let, letting us know about your journey. So walk us through your journey. I, I, want, I want to learn more. All right. So it's a lot. It's a, it's a 30 year story, Chris. So let's go. Uh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> so I'm an engineer at heart. Um, I started my career as a programmer. I know, I know it's hard to believe, but I was a total nerd growing up. I know that's, uh, it's, it's hard to get your head around, but man, I was a nerd. I, I love developing. Um, I started programming in seventh grade on a Commodore VIC 20. And when I saw that I could control what a computer does by typing in a few commands, I remember sitting back and going, Oh my goodness, this is so stinking awesome. I'm going to rule the world. I love it. Right. Right. And so I spent my whole, my whole, you know, growing up, um, anything to do with, uh, computers and programming and, uh, just had a blast, uh, being a nerd. Although in high school, it wasn't as much, I didn't have much of a blast being a nerd. Cause back then, if you played video games and you programmed, you were still like, Oh, you're kind of on the fringe. But, um, uh, but anyways, got past that and, and went to college, got a computer science degree. Uh, and then one year out of college, uh, I got a job building manufacturing applications for a forging company. And we built some really cool stuff for this forging comp uh, company here in uh, Southeast Michigan. And uh, there was five of us that, that, that uh, were in the computer department. And we built this application that controlled everything this, this manufacturing facility did. And uh, it, it got to be so big uh, with our customers and our suppliers. They would come in and they'd be like, this is awesome. Do you sell this? Or how can I get this? I would give you money for this. And finally, we were like, maybe we should, maybe we should start our own company. So, <laughs> right. um, yeah. So, so uh, April Fool's Day, 1995. I don't know why we picked April 1st of all days, uh, but we started Plex proper. We broke off from that forging company and they stayed on as a customer. It was a, you know, amicable, amicable um, transition. Yeah. And uh, we started our own company and, uh, that was in 95. That was five of us. And we now have about uh, 600, 600 employees. And we were acquired by uh, Rockwell Automation uh, uh, last summer. So uh, that's what happened to the company. And for myself through that time, as the, uh, as the company grew, I kind of transitioned into more of a leadership role. Um, and, and of course, you know, for a startup, boy, I did sales implementations, product management, uh, programming, Anything that we needed, you know, we did it. We did it all. And uh, many hats, that, many hats, many right? hats. Yes. Which, yeah. yeah. Which was good because I started losing my hair and so I could <laughs> cover that out. Right. So, <laughs> um, and, th and then, um, then I started expanding my reach kind of outside the company as far as uh, kind of an external face, speaking at mm -hmm. conferences, writing, writing articles. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And um, along the way, I ended up being in charge of, of the entire engineering department at Plex. But, you know, as we grew, I realized two things. First, um, we had done some cutting edge stuff at Plex. We were first in the cloud. Um, we were one of the first to use real time mobile devices in a factory. But mm -hmm. as we moved, as we moved out of that startup phase, um, we became really focused on the the customer, which isn't a bad thing. Um, right. But we were really we were really focused on features and capabilities, right? Because we had uh, we had really small competitors like SAP and Microsoft. And so we had to uh, we had to really make sure we were we were doing good by our customers. But it meant we started to drift away from that innovation that had mm -hmm. been our lifeblood. Mm -hmm. So um, I decided, you know what, I, I want to make sure that we don't lose focus on that. So I promoted one of the strongest leaders on my team to be a peer, and he took over the engineers. And I took a smaller team, and we've dedicated ourselves to research and innovation. Specifically, what cutting edge technology is coming for manufacturing that we need to be prepared for, that our customers need to be prepared for. And that's where I spent the last 10 or 12 years of my career researching, you know, really cool stuff like augmented reality, um, artificial intelligence, mind control devices, all kinds of cool stuff that we might someday find on the shop floor. That is so awesome. So, I mean, you're just, you're living a dream. It just sounds like yeah. that yeah. incredible story. Now, you're, so you're one of the original, what'd you say, five uh, yep, original five founders? Yeah. Where did the name yeah. Plex come from? 
<laughs> That's a great question, right? So it actually, the software and the company actually used to be called Plexus, P-L-E-X-U-S, like uh, okay. your solar your solar Plexus. It means where all the, everything comes together in a centralized spot. And that's okay. why we called it Plexus because Plexus was the, uh, the centralized brain for everything that happened in a manufacturing company. But after we broke off on our own, we found out that there was another software company that had the name trademark had the, the name Plexus, and we had to change the name. And we didn't know uh, Plexus was such in, ingrained in our brains and our customers. We just shortened it to Plex, and that's okay. how we got the name Plex. So. I was just yep. curious to get the best of me on that side. So I, yeah, I yeah. yeah. You know, what's <laughs> ironic though, yeah, what's ironic is there's now a, a, a media software company called Plex. And, I, and a lot of people, sometimes they get calls and emails that are like, my, my media software is not working. What are you going to do about it? I'm like, uh, nothing. <laughs> Right. I'm not right. going to do a thing. <laughs> so, uh, so I times. love it. Well, 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 thank you so much for unpacking your, your story. That was incredible. Yeah. Love, loved hearing that. You're, you already mentioned you're, you're on the front, line, the front lines for innovation. You're having wonderful conversations. You're hearing the manufacturing directly, the challenges they have. So what are you hearing? What, what are the, the, the primary challenges that industry wow. is coming to you that you're, that you're trying to solve? Yeah. So, the thing that we're hearing over and over with, with over the last couple of years, and, and when we get our customers together and say, okay, what's uh -huh. going on? Every single one of them, this is top of the list, okay. is, is labor shortage. Yeah. It's, and, and it's only going to get worse. I, they're, they're, they're predicting that by 2030, there's going to be 2 million open jobs, unfulfilled or unfilled jobs in manufacturing. And I've never seen a challenge like this. I've been in manufacturing my entire career. And this cultural shift in work mentality, um, like we've seen the last couple of years, it's been amazing. Uh -huh. and, and we're not going back, right? I don't think we're putting the genie back in the bottle there. But I think manufacturing output and capability is going to be um, effectively throttled until we can solve this, which uh -huh. is going to come in the form of, of both combination of um, – Recruiting skilled workers, training, upskilling or existing workers, and all the people parts of that, as well as you know, robotics, artificial intelligence, and automation. That's yeah. that's uh, that's that's the only way we're going to solve that. So, well, I mean, is there a stigma or something with manufacturing? Maybe maybe debunk something for us. I mean, most a lot of people still think dark, dirty, dangerous. I mean, is that <laughs> still out there? And you know, for I love, love yeah. your input here. I think it is. I think that's one of the biggest myths that we have to to overcome. It's still out there. Um, manufacturing is a dirty, dead end job. I think that's what people think. But this isn't mm -hmm. your father's manufacturing anymore. And and so we have generations of kids now that they've only known um, technology and, and and mobile and tablets, right? And they need to understand that manufacturing is high tech now. It requires significant skills. It's challenging. It's much safer than it used to be, and it can be an extremely rewarding career, and uh, it can really sustain uh, your lifestyle and provide a very comfortable um, a life for you. In fact, in 2021, I just read this, the average pay and benefits for manufacturing workers, now it's pay and benefits combined, was over right. $96,000, $96, and, and that's, that's compelling. So, um, so that's important, and I think the other thing that's important that we continue to push is, is this stat. Manufacturers perform almost 58% of all private sector R&D in this country. They drive more innovation than any other sector. So if you want technology, if you want challenge, if you want innovation, then modern manufacturing is where it's at. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What was that stat? 50, 60, 58%. 58% wow. of all private sector R&D is driven by manufacturing. That's crazy. Unreal. So, yes, I mean, it, it's, a, it's a definite need out there. I mean, and we're hearing the same issues with the labor shortage. And so maybe we got some listeners that I'm sure they're just tuning in this because they hey, they they see that we're talking to the chief technology officer at this software company and they want, they're looking for some, some advice, Jerry. So if, if they're getting ready to enter industry, what are you going to tell them? You, what advice would you give them to, to for one? come into manufacturing, <laughs> enter, enter this field, but, you know, help them along the way. So, so, so be, be a big brother mentor here and, and, and share some advice. That's funny. The first thing I was going to say is come on in. We need you, right? That's, <laughs> That's right. exactly what you said. That's the first thing. So um, if, if you're worried about like, where's my career going to where where can I go in a career? Manufacturing has got so many possibilities. The field is wide open. And I would mm -hmm. say two things. One, Many of these jobs don't require college education. There's so many areas that are exciting and fulfilling. 
technically challenging um, that you can start with either either right out of high school or maybe with some vocational training, and you're not saddled with tens or hundreds or thousands of dollars in debt that you would mm-hmm. with a college degree. So there's a track there. And I, I don't know if you've heard, of, ever listened to Mike Rowe and his Dirty Jobs podcast and TV show. And he's doing a great work trying to remove the stigma from hard work and and uh, manufacturing and, and the, the career you can have there without uh, college education. So that's one thing I would encourage mm-hmm. you to uh, encourage kids to, uh, or people to consider. The other is, though, if you do want to go to college, that's wide open also, because along with the traditional um, careers like engineering, mechanical engineering or programming, um, you now have stuff like robotics, artificial intelligence, additive printing, cybersecurity, all of these awesome hardcore tech fields that are so critical and important in manufacturing. And so mm-hmm. if you want to go that route, um, you have a, a wide open field. Uh, name your salary, name your place. It's the field is ripe right now for you to, to you're in the driver's seat in manufacturing if you have those skills. So um, pursue those. So my advice is either pursue that vocation, pursue that area of study in college, whichever you want to do. And there's going to be a job in the field waiting for you uh, that will sustain you. Yeah, and I, and I think to your point too, whether you go Votech or whether you go that the technical route through like engineering school, Again, you can. These are transferable skills. Wherever yes. you want to live in this world, you will have exactly. employment. You, and, and actually, really good employment, right? Yes, yes. And we're talking to customers, and they're like, "We've had open recs for, you know, 100, 150 employees, or dozens here, dozens there. All in, it. they just can't fill them. Mm-hmm. It's good jobs, good jobs. Health insurance, life insurance, four hundred one k, livable salary. So go for it, guys. We well, need you. I mean, just to pull, pull on this a little bit more, what can the manufacturers do? You, you, you talk to a lot of them to, yeah. to, to give more exposure to the plant floor and to the changes. Cause so many of them, I mean, I've grown up going into manufacturing plants, you know, week in, week out and you have to have passes. You have to write, have the right PPE. I mean, it's there. Sometimes they are dangerous. You got to make sure that you, you can't right. just be walking around these plants, but what can, what could those manufacturers do to open up the door or, or give a peek inside more to let, let the next generation see, Hey, right. this is what it actually looks like. So there's a couple things. Uh, I, I'm seeing um, kind of a para organizations like the National okay. Association of National Association of Manufacturers or, or NAM really start to have uh, have an impact here by kind of helping manufacturers and taking that load off them um, and, and driving the sort of um, uh, programs that we need to help kids realize what manufacturing is. And so they're taking some of these cla- uh, classes into the schoolroom with like miniature portable factories or portable lines and actually setting these up in facilities where kids can actually start to use them. Um, but I actually saw something this summer kind of along the same lines, but different that was so cool. I was at the uh, um, International Manufacturing Technology Show in Chicago, huge show, uh, 15,000 people there, tons of manufacturing uh, operations and technology on display, uh, just a huge conference. And day after day, I saw uh, teachers uh, parading their classrooms through this conference uh, to show them what was happening in manufacturing. And I think that the organize, organizers of the conference were, were helping with that. I think there was a program that they had built so that teachers could bring their kids. Of course, what teacher doesn't want to get their kids out of the classroom and kind of hand them over to someone else for a while? Right, and the, kids right. lo- the kids love getting out. And they are walking through these huge um, expo halls with, with these massive machines and the technology and the computers and the tablets and the robotics. And it was just a huge cool thing I've never seen before. I've been going to conferences my whole life. And that was a, a thing that I thought was really awesome, getting those kids out there and seeing what was what was available. So um, so I think manufacturers um, helping out these para organizations to do what they do best is going to really help uh, kind of drive that uh, uh, drive that desire into into our, our kids as they figure out what they want to do. I love it. I also think there's a there's an opportunity for the parents, you know, at the mm. at the dinner table, yep. having conversations with kids and, and embracing, hey, you know, yep. sh- maybe sh- taking the initiative and show that type of stuff. Or yep. you can reach out to a lot of these manufacturers and and they have, you know, open uh, tours and plant days where you can actually get a peek inside. But just yep. you know, celebrating it more versus you know, it, 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 the whole stigma's just got to change. We we need to yeah. celebrate this this manufacturing journey that yep. many would take versus. Because again, that four year degree is not for everyone, but there are opportunities to get in these manufacturing plants and have a wonderful career. 
Right. And I've seen, I've even seen, uh, Plex has done this and I've seen another, a number of manufacturers do this. If they started a first, uh, hands-on supporting uh, FIRST Robotics. I don't know if you yeah. ever heard of FIRST Robotics, oh, yeah. which is a great entry point into robotics and what right. they do. And, uh, and it's, a great, it's a great segue from, from that into just doing what you do there. Hey, I can do that for a living. I can build robots for a living right. and, and, and see that actually do something really awesome. And so it's a great way for manufacturers to get hands-on in that, in that effort. I love it. I love it. Well, the last question I got for you on the professional path, and then we'll then we'll get then we're gonna get off and, and talk to you outside of work. But from a professional standpoint, when you had a great day and you crushed it, you're, you're coming home, you're feeling good. You have, you have so much joy in your heart. What did you do that day? What, what did you accomplish? So it's interesting, and I and I'll answer that kind of in the progression of my career because, like I said, um, I started as a programmer, right? So right. when I was a programmer, that was easy. When I would finish a solution and I would show the customer and they were like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. This is going to make my life so much easier. Thank you. I was like, oh, that I, I, I was on cloud nine, right? But when I moved away from that, that, that kind of building block kind of uh, job of, of programming and started doing uh, leadership and speaking, I, I had to find satisfaction in more um, intangible moments, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and so that was kind of a journey in the middle there of my career. Um, not that I was feeling unfulfilled, but it was different. I had to figure out where do I find uh, that satisfaction. And, and these days, one of the things I love the most is when I give a talk or a presentation and I'm able to present like a complicated technology or a concept in a way that makes sense to my audience. Um, they're usually hardcore manufacturers. They're usually extremely smart, but maybe not always tech savvy. Mm -hmm. and, and, and drawing that those connecting the dots for them and those lights go on and they start asking questions and they come up, up to me after the, the talk and they have all these questions. And, and I feel like that was cool. I enjoyed that. I loved it. And, and I feel really good about doing that. Well, I can totally see why. I mean, you def, you've connected so many dots just for me when I'm doing these podcasts. This has been oh, well, wonderful, thanks. Jerry. <laughs> well, thank so, you. so let's talk, let's, let's get off the professional path for just for our last little bit together and talk about you outside of work, outside of your career at Plex. What's, right. what's some hobbies you got going on? Oh, man, I love uh, I love riding motorcycles. I got a big motorcycle that I ride with my wife quite a bit. Enjoy that. I love playing video games. Um, I know that's a shocker. Um, but one of, the, one of the hobbies that I love the most is playing racquetball. Uh, I love the sport. I play it whenever I can. I play in several state and national tournaments every year, as well as my local club. Um, you know, it's unfortunate. It, it was huge in the United States in the seventies and eighties, absolutely huge. And I kind of got in after that. So I missed that. It's right. kind of a dying, it's kind of a dying sport right now. Um, it's, mo it's mostly played by uh, old men. So on, on nights when we play, we spend half the time playing and then the other half of the time sitting around complaining about whatever injury that we're currently recovering <laughs> from or trying to recover from. So, so yeah, so that's what I do for fun. Okay. Well, I've never, I've never hit the racquetball court, but I may have to try no, that. You I, should. I am curious now. I'm, I'm a motorcycle guy myself. So what type of yep. motorcycle are you riding? So I just, uh, I just bought a 2022 Indian Pursuit. Uh, Indian. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, I had a gold wing that okay. I really loved. Um, but, uh, I now have the pursuit. It's a, it's a big touring, uh, touring machine that Indian just put out its first year. It's out. I, think so. and, I haven't uh, heard of that one. So is it, is it yeah. like a gold wing, like cruiser, cruiser style? It's more like a, you could compare it to a Harley, uh, road glide. So oh, it's, it's, okay. Well, yeah. I have, a, I have a Harley road King, man. So, uh, Oh yeah. Very similar yeah. to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for okay. sure. Okay. Boy, I, Next time I'm down uh, your way, Chris, we'll uh, I'll bring the bike and we'll we'll do a ride down there. I know it's beautiful riding down there. We we'll, if if we can hit the Blue Ridge Parkway, you'll oh. love it. You'll love you know, it. I, mean, I went to school in Virginia. I went to school in Virginia, and that Blue Ridge Parkway was just one of my highlights of of going to school there. It was beautiful. Where, where did you go to school at, Virginia? Uh, Liberty University. Oh yeah, yeah. LU. Yeah. So my my yeah. wife went to Liberty. Oh and, cool. Uh, yeah, so we we're, yeah. we're up in Lynchburg all the time. My sister in law, yeah. my brother in law, they all live up in Lynchburg. So. Uh, yeah, any chance we can get to go to LU, we're going to do that. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Good deal. Good stuff. Well, at Eco, that's why we always like hearing about family too, Jerry. So what would you like mm -hmm. to share with us about your family? I, I have an awesome family. I'm very blessed. I've been married to my wife, uh, Angie, my wonderful wife, for 31 years. Um, I come from a long line of couples that are married forever. I think they're just too stubborn to, to give up. My, you know, my grandpa and grandma were married for 65 years. Um, uh, Angie's mom and dad have been married for 57. My mom and dad are still going strong at 55. Although 
my dad once told me, he said, son, your mom and I would have been divorced a long time ago, but neither one of us wanted to take the kids. <laughs> so <I was> like, <laughs> okay. I'm not sure how to take that dad, but thanks. Right, so, right. But, uh, but speaking of kids, uh, we have four, we have four kids. I wanted six kids and my wife wanted four. So we compromised with four. Right. Um, that's how that works. So, uh, that's right. three daughters, that's right. three, you know, three daughters and a son. Um, and I've loved every stage. Even the teenage years were a blast, to be honest. They were wonderful. We had a great time. Um, but we have successfully booted them all out of the house as of just this summer. And so we are now officially empty nesters. So I love it, although it's different. Um, it's yeah. quiet. It's yeah. quiet. Yeah. Now, so, you, is your son the youngest? Yes, he is. So he's got my wife as his mom and three daughters uh, as his mom also. <laughs> they can't help but to mother him uh, growing up, right? It was just comes natural. Our son was, he was pretty laid back. He took it in stride, but we often had to tell the girls, we're like, okay, let's review. You are the sister and we are the parents. <laughs> right, right, <Got> it. right. <laughs> yeah. just, so. just have a good alignment check. That's exactly, right. Exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, well, good time, well, thank, so. thank you for sharing so much about your family. I love to hear yeah. that. Sounds oh, like you got one go. more thing. Uh, yes, my sir. first first grandchild uh, around Thanksgiving will be coming. Oh, awesome! Awesome! Yeah, awesome! So. Well, that, we'll we'll be praying for a healthy delivery. Well, thank there. you. Part of part of the the conversation is on the hero with our heroes. We love to hear like what do you enjoy? Podcasts, books, uh, just resources that you enjoy consuming. It could be just for fun, per, right. or it could be per, uh, you know for personal professional development. But right. just what do you enjoy listening to? Or, or watching. Yeah. So I'm not a big podcast listener. Um, okay. I, I find myself getting impatient. Like, I feel like if I'm reading this, I could skip to where I needed, where, you know, the interesting part right away. But I'll tell you podcast, a secret for podcasts. So, so, so the okay, secret for me. podcasts is, is, is two times speed. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> you I, know never I never listen to any podcast at one time. It's That's always fascinating, two times. Chris. It never crossed my mind. I'm yep. going to have to do that. So, That's the uh, secret. yeah. So, although, um, uh, there was there is one podcast that I think has been very uh, valuable. It's, it's called the Manufacturing Happy Hour with uh, Chris Lukey. So oh, yeah, I yeah. rec recommend yeah. that. If, um, but I love to read, and I love to read professionally. I love to read for entertainment. Um, one of the best books I've ever read is called Fire Someone Today by Bob Pritchett. Okay. Uh, it's kind of got a prov provocative title, but there are some fantastic nuggets in there, um, especially if you're a small business owner. Uh, but even if you're a manager or you lead people. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great book. Um, another book that was very influential, influential to me was, um, it's called Peopleware, Productive Projects and Teams by Tom DeMarco. Okay. Um, fantastic book. It really shaped how I thought about managing people. Um, very influential. It's a bit dated though. I'm curious if any, if any of your listeners out there read it, I'd love to hear. I, I'm not sure how it, um, I'd be interested to see how it translate to the kind of remote work climate right. that we find ourselves in maybe okay. i should read it again uh but uh but yeah and of course as a person of faith i have a huge library of religious books that i've enjoyed um, with the bible of course being uh, one of the most read and influential books in my life um and then entertainment i love everything i'm all over the board sci-fi to louis l'amour um i just finished dune the graphic novel and so uh i have uh any any fantasy war yeah. uh, you know any fiction i love i love fiction good stories I love so. it. I love it. Well, thank you for sharing that. And we'll make sure we put some links in the show notes for those few books that you mentioned. Yeah, so okay. Listeners, they want to check that out. They can they can go grab it. So awesome. Uh, almost at here at the end, Jerry. We we do a lightning round at the very end of our uh, hero conversation. So if you're willing to play along, we'll just jump in and have a little fun. I love it. All right. So what, what's what's your favorite food? Ah, uh, so my best comfort food is grilled cheese, perfectly mm. toasted with hot tomato soup uh, mm. on a cold a cold day here in Michigan. Nothing mm. better. Man. All right. Yep. I'm right there with you, buddy. Right there, right there with you. Uh, yeah, now, yeah. How about, how about drink? It could be soda, juice. What, what, what's your favorite type of thing that you like drinking? Diet Mountain Dew. And diet I know, Mountain. I know, I know all the nerds out there like diet. What, you know, um, a couple of years ago, I was, I was drinking three cans of Mountain Dew a day and uh, I was not in good shape and uh, I, I lost 65 pounds and I had to, uh, I had to switch over to a uh, diet pop. So that's why I'm okay. diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> so, so you so you lost 65 pounds by, yeah, by yeah wow that's great man just cutting out sugar yeah just by cutting out sugar yeah wow and playing a lot of racquetball and playing <laughs> exactly yeah exactly <laughs> right <laughs> very uh, cool very cool now this is a funny little question here what's on your nightstand 
<laughs> so um, remember I talked about old men and racquetball? Yeah. So on my nightstand is Biofreeze, uh, Tiger Balm, uh, Voltaren. And I'm not kidding. These are all the oint ointments and lotions I have to put on my back and my elbows and my knees before I go to bed so I can sleep. So Right. I, I mean, I think yeah. once you get to 40, you have to have like a Tylenol smoothie in the morning just to get going, <laughs> right? You know? <laughs> exactly. So oh, some, some days it's like that. So how about, oh. your, how about the, uh, your favorite app on your phone? Um, it's kind of an odd one. I have an app that I love. It's called My Radar. And uh, here in Michigan, the weather changes constantly. And I hate going to a website and trying to find, I always find it more valuable to use my radar because it shows me what the radar, what's going on right now, where I'm at, yeah. where the clouds are, where they're coming, if it's raining or snowing. And uh, I use it all the time. Okay. Very cool. Yeah. Especially, awesome. especially riding motorcycles. I find it yeah. very valuable. Oh, yeah. 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 There's nothing so. worse than being on a bike in a, in a, in a, in a rainstorm. So, oh, for yeah. sure. For sure. All right. Couple, couple, let's do a few more. How about a, a guilty pleasure? Do you have any guilty pleasures out there? Oh, yes. Caramel M and M's. Ooh, uh, okay. I have I I have to hide those bags all over the office. I <laughs> it's I eat way too many. It's I yeah. sometimes I just bought I shouldn't say that, I just bought the five pound bag today at the store. So yeah, yeah. I mean I, I just don't have willpower power when it comes to, <laughs> to M and M's. I, I don't know. It's I know, that's my night, you know. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> all right. What's your, sure. what's your favorite uh, your favorite movie all time? Shawshank Redemption. Nice. Um, it's not. It's not only one of the best movies ever, just on its own merits. Right. But there's some very strong religious analogies there with the life of of, of Jesus Christ and Andy Duf uh, Dufresne, the, uh, the the lead character in the movie. Yeah. Some nice parallels there that adds kind of a nice overlay to the movie that yeah. you might not realize, and it's very meaningful. I, I love that movie. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. How about uh, a show or a series? Any any anything that you're, that you're watching or you're keeping up with? So not that I'm keeping up with, but um, the best TV show ever made is a sci-fi show called Firefly. Um, and my wife and I watch it over and over regularly. And uh, <laughs> nice. nice. I, will always, I will always hate Fox for canceling that <laughs> series prematurely. I, 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 I will bear that grudge till I die. I hear yeah. you. I hear you. <laughs> so you you, you so, mentioned faith, faith a few times. Have you watched any of The Chosen yet? I have. Uh, it's on my list. I've oh. you, I've had multiple people tell me I need to, to watch that. So I, I will. All right. That, that yep. is a must. So that's, you know, okay. I, I'm not getting paid to say that. That is just a must <laughs> yep. from one brother to another. So anyway, there you go. That's Check that one out. And okay. the last question for you, Jerry, this is a very easy one, but this, you, you, there is a right or wrong answer. Dogs or cats? Oh, dude, <laughs> we live on a hobby farm. I can't make that choice. We've, <laughs> You know, we growing up, I mean, with my kids growing up, we had goats, chickens, dogs, cats, rabbits, lizards, gerbils, hamsters, birds, fish, honeybees. And um, with the kids out of the house, we've gotten rid of all the animals and we're down to one solitary cat, Simon, who thinks he owns the place. So at the moment, it's a cat. That's all right. You, yeah, hey, you, you bet it nine out of ten. It's all good. It's okay, all good. okay, okay. Thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad you can still talk with me. Oh goodness, I love it. I love it. This has been a wonderful conversation. We always wrap up yeah. Eco That's Why with the Why, Jerry. So, if somebody wants to know what your personal why is, what are you going to tell them? Uh, my personal why is is twofold. It's one to to point people to to Jesus Christ and that He's the uh, answer to all the questions that plague you. And secondly, is to be the best father uh, and husband that I can be to my family. Love that answer, Jerry. Love it so much. So thank you so much. We'll make sure we 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 put the connection, all the links in our show notes, particularly for Plex, for all the resources you pointed out here today. But is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners? No, I think we covered it. I'm I'm happy. That was fun. Well, Appreciate we had it. I had a, I had a blast. Thank you so much for everything that you shared and for being All being right. our hero here on Eco Ask Why. Well, thanks, Chris. Thank you so yes. much. Have a good day. All right, you too. That was a phenomenal story with Jerry. Just the, his the whole way that he his career has evolved to the point now he's you know hit over innovation, talking with manufacturing leaders, just being an inspiration to so many people. I love his heart his family, all the wonderful things he has going on, as well as, hey, racquetball. It feels like that's a lot of fun. We're, we're not going to hold it against him that he got the, the dogs versus cat question wrong. That's okay. We'll, we'll let that one slide. But seriously, Jerry is just, a, just a, a wonderful man. Really enjoyed that conversation. So I hope you did as well. Found some inspiration there. Maybe some ideas on things you could do in your career that start really moves to, to move things forward and lean in because we need more people in manufacturing 
that are embracing the idea of getting out and understanding how you can make an impact. There is so many different opportunities. So get inside these plants, have the conversations with these leaders like Jerry, and let's learn and let's grow together. If you're, if you are enjoying Eco Ask Why, I would encourage you to share it with other people. You know, go to your phone right now, hit that button, share that text message. That makes all the difference in the world. And then while you're there, give us a five star rating, write a review, two sentences. That's all you got to do. You can just say, this is a wonderful podcast. I love it each and every week. That would be wonderful. That would make all the difference in the world to us. So guys, I hope, hope you enjoyed this. Hey, remember, Eco Ask Why is all about people and ideas over products. We're not pushing any sales to you. We're just trying to inform you with information that's going to help you make better decisions in your plants in the future. Have a great day. Come back next week for more wonderful insight from, from the heroes of, of industry. And remember to keep asking why.